So we're doing a little double duty here. As you can see, that's our AV person right there. Yeah. See? Yeah.
Okay. <laughs> It's a conditioning treatment. 
And the delivery system is what? Hello, I can't see. The delivery system is the
but it's allowing for that to develop a little slower, you get a smoother consistency, and you can get in there and work and do what you need to do rather than speeding through and powering through that and doing hair like an ogre, slapping it on the head, hoping for the best. So we can slow down and be fairies and be really gentle with the hair and lighten that up and then go back into a beautiful color placement afterwards. So shades of cute. Is it applied to dry hair or wet hair? Dry. Dry. Shades of cute cream is especially great because we're going to go in there and really do a great shadow on her base to really create depth and dimension. Do you guys see that? We chose 08GI Shades of cute cream because it's a gold with a soft iridescence. 10 volume. It's going to give a nice deposit, but it also has a cream effect to create a nice shadow. So we can blend that base down just a little and really give a softened effect. Almost pinched and brought through naturally like her hair would grow out. If she had a big hard line, would that look like an obvious regrowth? So it's really about taking something to make it really fun and creative. So the tool of choice is a dry, long bristle brush, but also a short bristle brush. The short's going to give us a harder line of application. We go in there and do our retouch. We're going to apply that. However, we're going to go in with a dry bristle brush and pull that through the rest of the hair and really feather the color down and really give you a soft line. So there's no hard lines and horizontals. They're all vertical. So we're really dry brushing that down for you. There's also a tool on the market with an angle brush. You guys have seen this. It's an angle one. It really kind of does the work for you. So if you tend to be a little heavy-handed, you tend to be color like an ogre, I'm like, grrr. Right? So I need to come in there and go a little lighter. It allows me to have my fairy wand. It's soft. It's easy. It already has an angle to that. So it allows for me to pull that color just softly down to the rest of that. So I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. Basil? All right. So what we decided to do is you know that haircut is very popular with guys these days. Shorter on the side, longer on the top. Yes? Okay, so we started to see kind of a mash between the sexes. Not so androgynous, but a lot of similarities. So what we decided to do was take Arles' parting of the corner center of her eye. We want to work within each person's face frame. So it's not about just kind of looking at, oh, I just want to go with the roundness of the head. I want to go off of her eyes because it's a pivot point. So from the center of their eyes going all the way back, and then I'm going to go what we call the change of direction. I lay my hand on the occipital and the high point of the head, fold my fingers in, I'm going to find a separation point between the top and the back. It's considered a change of direction. You see, everything below the roundness of the head doesn't move. Say that. You know why I tell you to say it out loud? That's right. I want you to remember it. I want you to get something out of your Sunday. Everybody's missing football and you're feeling sad about it. You're all you're really bummed out about that, but I'm going to make it right to you. So I'm to make sure you get something out of it. Okay? So, everything below the round of the head doesn't. That's right. So I gotta make sure it's gonna stay where it's gonna go. I can't all of a sudden think, oh, I'm just gonna be able to push this forward. Because when I'm out there styling it, it's gonna hang straight down. So any type of movement that I want, I have to create it within the perimeter. So I have my change of direction, separate the top between the top of the eye, between the center of the eyes, and clip that out of the way. All my sides, corners, and back, I'm pulling it out 90 degrees from the wall. Okay? Not from the head. If I was pulling out 90 from the head, this would be 90 from the head, right? And I'm pulling out 90 from the head. Now, anything that's horizontal, 90 from the head, or lower, creates a heavier weight line around the front. Can't be helped, right? So what I'll do is, I will elevate it slightly above 90. But what I say for you is, can you see this little weighting line right through here? As soon as you see that weighting line, when you see in the picture, when you see it walking down the street, that means it was elevated at 90 degrees or lower. Okay? Now it doesn't make a difference. You can turn your fingers in. You can cut through the line. You're still going to have a weighty area here. That's okay. I'm not here to tell you what's right and what's wrong. I just want to give you cause and effect. We talked about principles, right? Principles, I don't want to make you like me. I want to make you like you. If you understand the principles, then you can define it any way that you want. Okay? That's what it's about. And this doesn't make a difference with what the texture is. It is a principle. What's a principle? Okay, I'll tell you. It's a secret. Sun rises where? It's rising in the east. That's right. I can be in China, the sun's in the east, right? I can be in Africa, the sun rises where? Okay, I can be Alaska, the sun's gonna rise where? Okay, that's called a principle. 
So, if I call you up on the phone and I say, what's your name? Michael. Michael. I say, hey, Michael, could you do a haircut for me? And you're like, no. And I'll say, please, please, Michael, do a haircut for me. And you're like, what's the elevation? Because listen, it's just a horizontal line. You just straight out. It's going to be straight graduation. You're going to have a nice heavy line through there. And then you're just going to pick it up and point cut into it. Break it up and still got some weight. Can you do that for me? Yes. And when I come back, I'm going to be like, Michael, you did an awesome job. Okay? So then when I'm going to go through here, this is kind of square in through here. Last person to cut Arliss's hair, they liked it kind of square. Arliss wasn't as crazy about that. So what I'm going to do is, I know that if I just cut it up, pick it up because of our hairline, it's still going to be square. So I'm going to use my razor, and I'm going to take my razor in like a pencil and shave through it. When you want to remove length, you hold your razor horizontally. When you want to remove fault, hold your razor like a pencil and just carve through. Sounds nice. And then after I do that, I'm going to drop this, just texturize it, my haircut's done. It takes me all maybe 10, maybe 15 minutes. Then I style it. What I would suggest to you is after you finish your haircuts, always personalize them. What am I saying? Why? Exactly. That's it. I mean, listen, you're going to be hearing on and on and on. You gotta brand yourself. You gotta get yourself a YouTube channel. You gotta get your Facebook page. You gotta get your Twitter account. You know what I mean? Look, maybe that's all true. Who am I to say? Right? Go to the top of the world. I wanna see you there because someday I'm gonna give you a decent haircut. That's why I educate. Someday I can get a decent haircut. I'd be like, oh, please, I went to your class. I gotta come here. I'm like, thank you. Cut my hair, please. Right? So, okay? So, what happens is this person right here is your YouTube, YouTube account. This is your Facebook person. This is your Twitter person. This is the person that's going to build you. Don't be so busy looking up there that you forget to look right here. So by personalizing after your haircut, you own that haircut. That hair, you make that haircut yours. Sound good? Thank you, Basil. Absolutely. You want to personalize your haircut. You want to cut the color, color the cut. So especially in a technique like this, you're able to really bring like a or a shadow face. A little further down, you want more of an edgier look. And if someone with short hair says, you know, I just can't wear that ombre look. We can customize that to have a soft effect and really change the look just with a little bit of change of tone. Maybe she's an all over one, you've been bleaching and toning her for a long time. You can save your work. You've already got your light hair already done. You're just going in there and changing her tone and flavor. So you're able to create a customized look and really customize it to the cut. So that's actually what I'm working with right now as we work towards the front. I'm working just from the bottom of the section up, but now that I've gotten closer to the front and the side, I'm now going to go more of a diagonal, almost like a pie shape off that center of the head. So we're really able to create that soft shadow, but also keeping it looking horizontal or striking. And we can start in a diagonal sectioning. As we place that, we want to turn more vertical and diagonal across the front there here. Do you guys see that finished effect there across the front? So it really falls into the base sectioning. So we can customize this to what part she has. So we definitely want to make sure that we're applying that color to the part. So as a vertical placement here, we're going in with a short bristle brush, working up from the bottom of the section to the top. Because you know we'll start from the top and try to work our way down. As you work to that top, you can just lay that slightly. Dropping that hair down and falling out, finding out where that natural falling position is and where you 
Good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through with some heavy diamond oil. Okay, now what I know about diamond oil is that it's going to penetrate into the hair. Are you guys familiar with um, argon oil? Okay, so that's a silicone-based oil. Nothing wrong with silicone. Silicones do some incredible things. They, they absorb heat and it protects the hair from using helium. But it does not penetrate into the hair. Argon oil, I'm sorry, diamond oil penetrates into the hair. So it's like taking a paper towel, laying it on a puddle, and watching it soak in. So if I put too much argon oil, and all I have to do is go through the blow dryer, blow it out, blow it out, blow it out, blow it out, blow it out. I've got nothing to worry about. I put too much diamond oil in, it's like she hasn't shampooed her hair in a week. Well, that might be a good look. That's what I'm going for right now, actually. But what I'm going to do is get my shine and separation, because I know her hair has been heavily compromised by the lightning, so I'm not worried about the healing properties or the <coughs> penetration of the oil. And then I'm going to go through with a little bit of powder refresh, because the powder from the powder refresh is going to soften the effect of the diamond oil. It's going to be my paper towel, and it's going to give me some shine and texture. What I like about it, yes, what I like about it is that it's going to, it's going to uh, give me shine and separation and keep it moving constantly. Can you see my look? Can you see by just dropping the top, leaving it disconnected, that it looks like it's connected? Super cute, huh? And so I'm going a little bit more extreme with my oil. Because what we're showing a lot of looks that we're seeing is kind of a wet look. Have you seen that one? Yes? Yes. It's great I've seen some wet shigongs where the hair is pulled back and twisted back. And you get just a beautiful, beautiful look. So let's talk a little bit about color theory. So what is the opposite of yellow on the color belt? Violet. So when we use violet, if we have too much yellow in the hair, does it work? Yes. Neutralizes it out. But if it's a little too orangey or more yellow orange, you probably need something with a little more punch. So what has a little bit more deeper impact than violet? Alright, so this is our list. Okay. Middle of the eyes. 
going straight back to the direction, the change of direction between the top and the bottom. Everything's pulled out, this straight 90. The irregularity that you get along the perimeter comes from the hairline. Finishing off with a razor, if you're not comfortable with a razor, you can point cut. If you're not comfortable point cutting, you can use a thinning shear with a much higher elevation. If you're not comfortable with a razor point cutting, a thinning shear, you're in the right place. You're <laughs> getting educated. So, um, like I said, I'm just drop it. What do you want? Shape and, and kind of lean, 
And I also want you to think about tone, okay? Tone not making it darker. And our model over here, she was once kind of a brown red. She had red in her hair before. She told me she tried to cover it up with a little bit of NW and color gels. And then she tried to cover it up with some mahogany violet infusion. Do you think there was some red still underlying in her hair? Yeah. You got it. Because what corrects red? Green. Green. We all know that, right? But she wasn't thinking. She was coloring her hair. She was having fun, so it's OK. But ultimately, we did come out with a new fashion shade. And this fashion shade in Shades of Cute Green is NGR, Natural Green. So we use natural green in her hair, and believe it or not, it doesn't look green, right? Perfect. So what we're going to be doing, so overall the conclusion is a very, very nice balanced, balanced, balanced brown, where it's not too red. So here's my section for this. And it's actually, believe it or not, this technique was done with less than 15 foils. Less than 15 foils. So my section for this is basically from the front to the back. Who likes doing highlights and a base coat at the same time? Is that a little challenging or is it easy? It's easy. So you may be a little challenging, but to do highlights and a base coat all over sometimes takes a little bit of time. And this, not so much. So you can definitely tell that it's sectioned from one side and it's sectioned from the other side. Her highlights are right in the front area, coming up to the very, very top of the head. I did isolate some pieces out in the very, very top of the head, just a little bit. I want to get away from the, the usual highlights coming straight from the scalp, not in this technique. I kind of wanted to let the, the highlight speak for itself and kind of shadow from underneath. They are diagonal forward, believe it or not. So with my white comb, the way I lay these highlights in, I lay them this way, or I lay my, my, my foils this way. Again, it's almost like that leading tower of Pisa. It's when it tilts your eye when you look at the color. So it's shifting to the shifting to the front. <coughs> so I start from the bottom from the top with my highlights. Coming in. I use my very, very favorite formula, flash lift. Who loves flash lift? Woo! I love, it, Woo! I love it, right? <laughs> so I use flash lift to create that brightness effect and then I glaze it as well. I glaze it with two formulas. The all over glaze, the first base formula was the 05 NGR and clear, equal portions. That actually made it a 07 NGR. Overall, we are talking about her being an all over level 5 brown red, 7 NGR. The shades if you like? No. No, it doesn't. It does not like. It actually just deposits. So what I did was using the 7 against the 5, it doesn't make it darker. It just keeps it on the level five, but puts on the sunglasses. Everyone put on your sunglasses. Put it on. Come on. There you go. We put on the sunglasses. So again, her overall base color was actually red all over. A really, really bright, not bright red, but almost like a very deep red and a brown red. What we did was just kind of put on the sunglasses, took the red out, but made her a nice chocolate brown. What else are you doing over there, Basil? Okay, so I went through first, I used some guns on dry hair. Has anybody ever tried guns on dry hair? Yes? Tell me about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it doesn't. It's very soft and pliable. You can see I've got a little shine. Remember, this is compromised blonde hair. A few weeks ago, I worked a wedding, and we had a ton of people that we had to finish. And we couldn't get everybody up at 5 a.m. for the wedding. There's just not that way. I don't know why. So we had 30 minutes to do a style on each person. We had about 10 bridesmaids. And so we couldn't go from what to dry. We couldn't set their hair and go through it. So we went through. I talked to this. There's a great record artist named Roger Molina. Have you guys heard of Roger? Anyway, yeah, look him up. You can look him up on Roger.com. Look up his Facebook, his Twitter account. But he's an incredible work with artist. He's created a new haircut video. He went through it. I watched him put so much guts on the hair, I thought it was impossible. When he first put it on, he worked through the hair with like a wide tooth vent brush. I used something with a lot of space between the teeth so it doesn't catch on the hair as much. 
When you go through it at the beginning, you go through it slow. As you go through it slow and it starts to dry, it breaks through and the hair becomes softer and more pliable. The reason why I want to create a little bit more texture to the hair is so I can pile it up on top of each other and not be so dependent on spray. And when I went through it, the first thing I want to do is move it in the direction I want it to go in. So I'm concentrating on the base, knowing that the mid shaft and the ends, I'm going to change the texture with my iron. So I focus first on the interior. I'm what we call it right here, the zone one, and making sure that zone is moving in the direction I want it to go in. And then what I'll do is I'll rub this up with my fingers, put in a little bit of powder grip for texture, and I think I'll have a slightly different look than the bob she showed up with. Would you agree? Yeah, I know. What's her mother going to say? And Darnell? So moving forward in this color technique, as you guys can notice, I'm actually going to switch to you guys so you guys can actually see what's inside the foil. So what's inside the foil is pretty much one of our styling agents, which is pretty great. Um, her hair is already colored before, so again, we don't have a magical shampoo bowl and all the assistance to help us with. So we're definitely using two things at once, using some styling aids, so that way um, the base can do its job. But ideally, so we're coming in, pretend it's this flash lift. I know it's a little watery, this flash lift. But the flash lift is coming in. I'm coming about two inches away from the roots. Two inches away from the roots and applying the rest on the mid strand and ends. I'm going to use the butt of the brush. I know, the brush has the butt, okay? We're going, to create, we're going to create a little bit of diffusing from that very, very top of the line. I don't want to see a very blunt line when I come up here and when she parts her hair. I want to see something very, very subtle. You guys can create this in any type of highlight, not just only from the beginning, not only just from any highlight or any technique itself. So, coming two inches from the roots all the way down to the mid strand and ends. Using the butt of the brush, coming through and just creating and breaking up a little, a little bit of, uh, let's say, highlights in this area. So just coming in, using the butt of the brush, making sure everything is nice and saturated, and then sealing up the foil itself in whatever fashion you'd like to do. Now, in this case, I actually did everything all at once. So, I started from the back area, did all of the 05 inch ER and the clear and 10 volume inch JTQ cream. And then what I did was start from bottom to top. So I took this bottom area. I didn't start the highlights until about right here. So I started from here, put a foil right underneath that one. So her ears don't look green. Put in the 05 inch ER all right there. Isolate that foil, took a little fine slice, did my flash lift, isolate that, and then start with my 05 inch ER and clear. Just keep going up, keep going up, and keep going up. Not only every <coughs> process at once, because Shades EQ process in how many minutes? <coughs> 20 minutes. And so it's pretty, pretty quick. So ideally, you know, if I was to section all this, put 20 minutes, go in between all the foils, put all my base color through, I may be taking longer, and I may lose control of the lightness, where it may become level 25 instead of level 7, which I want. I don't want to go too extreme, I just want to create a little bit of brightness. But overall, so the foils are going to lay diagonal forward just like this, pretty much like that. Ideally, her part's a little off-center, so in this area, there's less hair, in this area, more hair. So where do you think my highlights, where do you think I'm going to put more of my highlights, in this area or in this area? This one. In this area. Always remember that. So again, I did a little bit more highlights in this area, a little less, and again, it's diagonal forward, just right in the front area to create a little bit more drama in the haircut. So we're not done with her yet. She still has to get a haircut. This haircut's going to play the same part as what we did with the diagonal forward in the highlights. I'm pretty sure you guys know what that haircut's going to be, right? Right. So, pretty much. The story behind this also was, it was definitely creating our, our two new full colors. Because we glazed this with 06 GG, 06 Gold Gold, it's called Minus Touch, and Shades EQ Gloss. And the 06 GG creates more of a golden type of feel. It creates more reflection, okay? So I also want you to picture two more images in your head. I want you to picture one bird, to picture two birds. Two birds. One bird's going to be Snow White. 
and the other bird's going to be canary yellow. Imagine we put two, imagine we put them both in the sunlight, which one is going to be really bright and outrageous? The canary yellow or the snow white? Really? Canary yellow. The canary yellow gives off so much reflection. Believe it or not, gold in your Shade DQ gloss is yellow. It's yellow, yellow. So what I'm doing is I'm creating shine through the gold, gold on top of the highlights itself. So I'm going to create a little bit more brightness. So when she goes into this light or when she's in any sort of light, you're going to see the gold, gold pop out at you along with the all over base color. That was my inspiration story behind this. Hello.
decided we want to have highlights in there, but we want to keep it more of an organic feel. All right? I don't know about you guys, and I might be dating myself, but when I was doing highlights back in 1990s, late 90s, but it was the idea, how close could you get into the scalp, right? We felt really comfortable if we could peel back the scalp and put it right to the skull and get it that close. But if you look nowadays, it's much more of an organic feel. You're not seeing stripes. You're starting to see pieces just start to kind of come out. And so what we did was we deepened up her zone one and we used 5DC, 20 volume. Why 20 volume? Because I wanted to see some pop. So with that 20 volume, it gave her new growth some pop. Otherwise, if I used 10 volume, it may have made it too dark. And then all of a sudden, it would be like, ooh, it looks like new growth. Now it looks like a nice shadow. And you've heard that a lot. We've talked about shadow and shadow and shadow. But you're seeing where highlights have to have something that grows out of and makes it much more of an organic feel. And that's what we went with. So first what we did, and just taking it step by step, is we did 5BC Color Fusion 20 volume. After she was done, we rinsed her off, we brought her back, and then I placed in highlights. And we used foil, and we did them in different ways. What we did was we did them in diagonal sections. Why diagonal sections? In fact, Basil, can I just ask you real quick, what happens when we cut diagonals? What kind of effect does that create? It's funny you ask that. <laughs> I'm going to be doing some diagonal cutting here. Oh, cool. Because what happens when you cut diagonally, it creates more of a rounded shape. Cutting diagonally also enables you to move from one section to another section seamlessly. So, for example, behind the ear, it's notorious to get holes. A lot of times there's not much hair in front of the ears. So by moving diagonal into the front section, it enables you to take little baby steps forward so you don't end up cutting too much. Awesome. So here's the thing. We talk about principles, right? Bale said in the beginning. I'm teaching you principles <coughs> about styling and also about cutting. Well, there are principles that go on with hair coloring. There's also principles that go on when we do foiling. Principles of foiling, right? <coughs> so it's the same thing. If I place foils diagonally, I get more of a sense of movement. If I'm going to go ahead and put foils in her hair and I'm doing them horizontally, just like if I were to do a haircut, I create more of a weight line so she gets a lot more weight. If I go ahead and put in vertical sections, I get the idea of length. But for her, we want to keep this very organic and make sure that the highlights just kind of pop out. So we kept everything in diagonal sections with our foil. I like it. Okay, do you remember when I was talking to you about pulling the hair straight out at 90 degrees and creating a straight line? Yes? Okay, what well also happens when you elevate the hair as if it was from the floor, 90 degrees from straight from the head, and you cut a straight line. It always feels so fantastic to be able to comb the hair up, stand there, and cut that straight line. However, what happens is when the hair falls, it also creates a straight line. Have you ever noticed when you stand behind somebody at the grocery store and you'll see some graduation and it looks like a one length bob all the way down to the bottom and then it's all layered underneath? Yes? A lot of times, if you comb that hair straight up, you're going to see a perfect line. But guess what? Your haircut doesn't live up here unless you're doing a heavy spray mohawk. You always got to think about how it's going to land when it falls down. So, with Jennifer's hair, when she went into her, her last haircut, they really layered this quite a bit. And you can see this heaviness coming right in through here, am I right? Yes? Okay, so it's not a question of good or bad. It's just a question of you being conscious of what you're creating. So as soon as I comb this straight up through here, I always, I was afraid my phone would break. Isn't that funny? My phone's like right in stereo. It's probably my mother. It's Sunday. So I'm combing this straight up. Do you see this straight line? Okay? So I know that when this falls, it's going to create another straight line. But if I want to create some shortness and movement on top, I've got to cut the top. If I elevate it at 90 or below, it's also going to create a straight line. So what does that mean? Pardon me? Take a guess. Wild guess. Wild guess. What's that? Yes? What was the question? 